Good morning. I'm Michael McCarthy, Director of Music here at FBC, and I would like to welcome you all to worship this very fine Sunday morning. We are very excited at the moment because we are only three Sundays away from regathering in person. November 1st is the date set, and we just can't wait to see as many people that feel comfortable in coming to service. So please keep an eye on the FBC website to see what that's going to look like over the next week. We have a great service lined up for you today. It's a service full of Michaels. You've got myself, Michael McCarthy, leading you with Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus, and our very own Mike McKinney leading us in Here I Am to Worship. We appreciate his talents so much at FBC. We also have a special guest from Nashville, Tennessee, Mr. Michael Boggs. So sit back or get up and grab a coffee and please enjoy the service. Step down into darkness, open my eyes, let me see beauty that made this heart adore you, hope of a life spent with you. And here I am to worship, here I am to bow down. Here I am to say that you're my God. You're all together lovely, all together worthy, all together wonderful to me. King of all Have you ever seen a tightrope walker? You may have maybe been to a circus or a show or saw a video on YouTube or maybe on TV where someone walks on a rope all the way across a room or maybe over a net or over a pool of water. Now, if I laid this rope down on the ground and tried to walk on it, I might be able to stay on it. I'm not overly coordinated and so I might fall maybe to the side. But tightrope walkers don't just walk on a rope laying on the ground. No, they take the rope, and they're usually a little bigger than this, and they tie it on one side and the other, and they pull it until it's super, super tight. So when they stand on it, it doesn't bend down too far. That's why it's called a tightrope. And so once it's all secure, they carefully, one foot in front of the other, walk across that rope. 
Now, tightrope walkers don't just get up in the morning and decide they're gonna just go walk on a rope suspended high above something. They're gonna practice, they're gonna have some talent and some coordination, and they might even go to school for it. Well, there was a really famous tightrope walker lived a long time ago named the Great Blondie. Because he had blonde hair, people called him the Great Blondie. Now he started going to school to learn how to be a tightrope walker when he was a little boy. Well, he had natural talent. He was very good at it. He was so good, he became really famous and thousands of people would come to watch him walk on a tightrope wherever he was. Well, he decided that he wanted to walk across Niagara Falls. Now, I have not been to Niagara Falls, but I've seen video of it and it is intense. You go over like this huge waterfall and it's really, 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 really deep. And so if he were to fall off that rope, he would not survive. Well, people came from all over to see him do this, thinking maybe he's gonna fall this time. He's never fallen before. Now, the great Blondie was unique in that he was crazy, charismatic. He always did creative things. He might dress in costume. He might do a somersault on the rope. He would do crazy tricks up on the rope. And so people came to see what he was gonna do next. Well, one time he decided he was gonna push a wheelbarrow across the rope suspended above Niagara Falls. And so he walked all the way across with the wheelbarrow. And when he got to the other side, he turned to all the people that were watching and he said, do you think I can go back across with my wheelbarrow? And they were like, well, yeah, we saw you come across the first time. And he said, okay, who wants to jump in the wheelbarrow and I'll push you across? No one would get in that wheelbarrow. They saw him do it but they weren't sure that they trusted him with their life. Because if something happened to him or that wheelbarrow, that person was not going to survive. No one trusted him that much, even though they could see what he was capable of. Jesus talked to his disciples a lot about trusting and following him. And they had questions and they had doubts, even though they had seen exactly what he could do, and they had seen miracles happen. And they had listened to his stories and promises and all about God. They still weren't sure. They needed to trust him with their life. And it was hard. And so Jesus kept saying, trust me. I can tell you how to get to heaven. I can unite you with God. I'm going to be with God. All you have to do is trust me. Listen to my words, watch my actions, watch what I've done. I will never let you down. I will never leave you. I will never lie to you. You can always trust me. And that was a hard thing for the disciples to hear and for them to learn and for them to accept. And even today, Jesus is telling us in the Bible, we can trust him. Now, I know that sometimes the little voice in your head tells you, don't do that. Maybe you're really tempted to hit your brother when he does something or lie to your mom and dad or to be kind of ugly to somebody or not be very kind to your teacher or maybe cheat on a test. And you always have that little voice that says, that's a bad choice. That's God reminding you what you're supposed to be doing. You are a child of God and you know the choices that God wants you to make. You have to trust him that even though you really, really, really don't wanna do something your parents have asked you to do, and you're really stubborn and you really don't wanna do it, you know that little voice is saying, you need to listen to your parents. You need to honor your parents. This is what I want you to do as a child of God. This is what I want you to do. You have to trust that God always has your best interest at heart and he wants you to follow him, even when it's not exactly what you want it to do. And so just like the disciples, we can get in that wheelbarrow and trust Jesus with our life because he is never going to let us fall. And he's never going to let us down. We always can trust him. I'll say our prayer this morning. Gracious God, remind each boy and girl sometimes when they're wondering whether or not 
God is always there for them. Can they trust him? Even when they're not sure that's the right choice, but they kind of know what God is telling them. Remind them that they can always trust that little voice in their head of God urging them to do something. That God always has their best interests at heart. And just like the disciples had to learn to trust Jesus with their whole life, we can trust Jesus with our whole life as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Trust in Jesus just to take him at his word, just to rest upon his promise, just to know the said the song sit tis so sweet to trust in jesus how we trust in him with our daily lives this is where brian and i usually hang out during worship 
Uh, I usually sit down by the soundboard mixing sound and uh, enjoying using the gifts that God has given me. And Brian is up here on this level, uh, working with the cameras and doing the things that God has gifted him to do and to serve in ministry. Because Paul says that each one of us has been given a gift to use in the ministry of the church. Brian and I, Brian and I are using our gifts. Michael McCarthy uses his gifts. Pastor Glenn and Amy use their gifts. And we want you to be able to use your gifts as you trust in Jesus to give back to him what he has so richly blessed you with. And so today, as we pray together for our offering, I pray in the very same way that I'm using my gifts, Brian's using his gifts, we want you today to be able to give as God has gifted you for the work of the ministry. Let's pray together this morning. God, we thank you for these opportunities to give. I thank you for Brian and how he uses his gifts that you have given him so richly to fulfill and to benefit the kingdom and build this ministry. And God, we pray for those folks today that are in their homes, that are in their cars, that are watching this online in a variety of ways. God, that they will, they will give as you have gifted them. They will give of their time. They'll give of their resources. They'll give of their monies and their tithes and their offerings so that this kingdom, so that your kingdom can be expanded and broadened throughout our whole region and people throughout the St. Pete area and beyond can come to know you as their personal Savior and Lord, that they can trust in you today because you are the one who changed our lives. For your name we pray and believe. Amen. Now, let's continue to worship. Brian, take it away. Good morning, friends. It's good to be with you, and I'm glad that you're taking time to look in as we continue on our walk through 52 weeks of Jesus. Today, we're going to talk about how we learn to trust in Jesus and what that means for us. And we've already sung about it. It's going to be the theme of our service. But as we get ready, I'm going to ask you to do something. If you've got some note cards laying around, grab it. Grab one. Actually, grab two. If not, piece of paper, an envelope, anything will do. And on the bottom of it, I just want you to write, I'm doing it right now with you, okay? Because I said I would. And then leave a spot underneath there, a little line, kind of looks like that, for signature. We'll come back to that just a little later. But before we go into our sermon, We've got a great treat for you today. I want to introduce you to a great friend of mine, Michael Boggs. Michael is a well-respected singer-songwriter in Nashville, a worship leader at one of the premier uh, worship uh, venues in America for young adults. But beyond that, he's just a guy who gets it, who understands the journey of faith, uh, has had a lot of success in a lot of venues, but is so down to earth uh, and really grounded in who he is and who Jesus is. So this morning, we're going to have a little conversation with Michael. And then he is going to sing for us one of my favorite songs of his that I guarantee you, you'll love. Take a listen. Good morning, friends. It is more than a joy today to introduce you to my buddy, Michael Boggs. Michael, how are you doing this morning? I'm great. How are you? Man, not too bad, not too bad. Uh, Michael is uh, a musician in Nashville, and for 15 years has been the musical director uh, at Kairos, which is one of the most amazing ministries for young adults uh, that I've ever seen, ever been around. And we may talk a little bit about that uh, as we go. But some of you will also remember his music uh, as the front man for the band FFH. Uh, where my boys uh, fell in love with it in their teenage years, fell in love with your music before I got to know you. So, Michael, tell me a little bit about what you're up to these days. 
Yeah. Um, well, I'm busy because, uh, one, my wife and I, Keely, we have uh, a little boy who's turning four this month. And, uh, and so, uh, we're doing everything we can to keep up with him right now. He, he requires a lot of energy and all of our attention. So we're, <laughs> we're, uh, we're having some fun with that, but I, I'm also, as you said, a worship, uh, pastor, music director at Kairos. And that, that has really kept me busy. This is my 15th year to be here wow. at Kairos. So still learning all kinds of things, um, about young adults and, um, the, Kairos primarily focuses on that 18 to 25, 18 to 30 age range. And so uh, just constantly learning uh, new things about how to do my job better and how to reach young adults. And so um, still writing songs and love to write songs. And uh, in fact, I'm part of a collective now called the Wildfire Worship Collective and cool. we're writing and releasing new music as well. So it's a uh, it's a busy season. I thought I thought this whole coronavirus thing was going to allow me to kind of sit back for a minute, but it has done the exact opposite. Wow. <laughs> I've been busier wow. than I've ever been. <laughs> I bet. Well, Michael, we were talking just earlier. It's hard to believe that uh, 10 years ago when I was on sabbatical, uh, I was introduced to you uh, by Mike Glenn, the pastor there at Brentwood. And I, I, had, I don't know if I've ever told you enough how thankful I am for the time you gave me during that time, as we talked about music and faith, how all that wraps up, but particularly the friendship that is carried on and the overlap of our ministries uh, over these years. And uh, I know you're talking about writing songs. There is one particular one of yours that's a favorite of mine, uh, and that is what I already know. And so tell us a little bit about the origin of that song uh, and where, where and how it came to life and uh, how it speaks to you. Yeah, um, yeah, that was it. Was a surprise just having written it. I wrote it with um, if you're familiar with a country artist named Brian White. Um, yeah. it, we were yes. we were, had written as the first chance that we had to write together. Sat down, he had an idea, and we were sort of writing this up tempo sort of idea. And in the middle of it, I said, "Well, what about this?" And just sang a little bit of of this idea that was absolutely spontaneous on the spot, a little bit of what I already know. And he goes, I think we should, I think we probably need to write that. And uh, so we had had a conversation before um, that writing session just about how, um, you know, for the most part, um, man, a lot of things that we need to know or need to know in our soul, um, we've already been told before. Um, mm -hmm. We already, we already kind of know them. We just need to be reminded of mm -hmm. those things from time to time. And, uh, you know, even for me, I think, and, and Brian, too, in that situation when we were writing, it's like, man, I, I, I know that God is with me um, wherever I go, whatever I do. But there's still times I feel alone. And it's in those moments that I have to remind myself of what I already know. The scripture says that God would never leave me or forsake me. There's times that I feel like I, was something that I've done that's that's a transgression or a sin is just outside the reach of, of God's grace. And I have to remind myself that, that God's grace doesn't just cover one of my sins, but it covers all of my sins. Um, but those are things that I need to be reminded of. Um, you know, every now and then, and and some of those on a consistent basis. And I, I think we just kind of found ourselves going, wow, I think this song is as much for us as anybody else. And so that's kind of how the song came about. Uh, I, as I do, usually I went home and and, and played it for my wife. She's, uh, she's tough to impress. She's heard a lot of songs and uh, she's not afraid to tell me the truth. <laughs> as you know, we, we are married to the same woman when it comes to that. So <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh, and it's, 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 I'm so glad she's honest, but it hurts sometimes. Oh, <laughs> but, yeah. Um, she listened to it and she said, ah, there's something kind of special about this. It, and she'd been, um, trying to get me to, to sing it, uh, out. And I just, I probably, it's probably six months and I just was a little bit nervous about it. And, and, uh, and finally, um, at, at Monroe, uh, at your, at, at the place that you were previously pastor, man, I decided I worked up the nerve to be able to sing it, uh, at one service and, uh, was so glad I did it. I think it's been meaningful to some people and, uh, certainly been meaningful to me to feel like the Lord has used that song in a way that I never could have, uh, could have foreseen. So, yeah, well, he has done that. And then some along with a lot of others, and uh, Michael, I, I would just be very grateful this morning if you would do us the privilege of, of playing that song for us. 
And let me introduce it to our people here in St. Petersburg. And uh, let's let that song keep living and, uh, and finding its way into people's lives and faith. I would love to. Outstanding. Thanks, man. has been a teacher, an enemy and a friend, and at times I've learned my lesson the hard way. I've been known to lose my temper, my patience and my pride, but I've never lost the need to pray. And I don't need some mountain move for me or some miracle to behold all I really need is just a little more faith to believe what I already know you never leave me You'd walk right by my side But right now all I feel is alone Cause I can't see your angels Watching over me Oh, but Jesus loves me The Bible tells me so Well, I don't need some mountain move for me or some miracle to behold all I really need is just a little more faith to believe what I already know and I know there's much bigger than mine But Lord if you get the time Well I don't need the waters to part for me or get a glimpse of those streets of gold All I really need is just a little more believe what I already know yeah the secret to walking down life's road is to believe what you already know Box, thanks so much. Not just for sharing that song with us today, but throughout the years. It's been one that I have listened to and leaned on a lot. Keely was right. That's a fantastic song. It speaks the truth. It speaks to the heart. It speaks to real life. And we're grateful. Friends, if you hang around to the end of the service, you'll hear another song from Michael Box this morning as he joins the other Michaels in our uh, circle of friends and music, and I know you'll be blessed. Today, we're talking about remembering what we already know. And for our, many of us, we get an idea of what that is. We're gonna regather in this church 
in just a few weeks on November the 1st. Some of you may need to remember how to get here. Remember the direction. Uh, remember to, to get up and go. That Sunday's coming, and we're excited about that. Remembering what you already know is taking the truths of who God is as he has perfectly expressed in the person of Jesus. And he's revealed himself to us. He has revealed himself as to his character. If you want to know the character of God, what God is like, what motivates him, uh, what it is that, that he demonstrates through all his actions, look at the life of Jesus. It's a perfect representation of God. If you want to know God's capacity, look at the miraculous things that Jesus did along the way as God in the flesh. And if you want to know his commitment to you, to me, all you need to do is look at Jesus, who came and gave his life that we might have life. Came not to be served, but to serve. And to understand that commitment that he has for us is something that we can believe in and is something that we can put our trust in. You see, in the, the word that we talked about last week, pisteo, uh, most often translated believe in the New Testament, uh, has its, it's its twin, it's how we interpret it, to trust. Oftentimes the same root word. And the catch there is that believing is, is that in our mind, in our heart, in our whole self, it's what we do. Trusting is, goes a little further than that. It's living in a state of being that tells us, that suggests, that shows that we've put our trust in God. That we've put our trust in his perfect representation of himself in this world, Jesus. Because sometimes it's just enough to know that God can be trusted. And on difficult times and difficult days, sometimes that's just what you hang on to. That's what you hold tight to, that God can be trusted. One of uh, the greatest, if not perhaps the most well-known passage involving trust and Jesus is when he comforts his disciples in John 14. So if you have your Bibles, take a look with me. Uh, if not, follow along, it'll be on your screen. And here are the words that Jesus is speaking to his troubled disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. See, he sensed that they were in a state of, of disarray. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my father's house are many rooms, and if it were not so, I would have told you. And I'm going there to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back and take you to be with me, that you also may be where I am. You know the way to the place where I'm going. And Thomas, who I oftentimes is called Thomas the Doubter, I like to think of him as more as Thomas the, the Realist. Thomas said, Lord, we, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? And Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth, and the life, and no one comes to the Father except through me. That passage is one that, that many folks who've been around the faith for a long time have, have committed to memory, whether they set out to do it or not. It's, it's very familiar to us. And when we look at the things that are put forth in that, you begin to see something about the heart of Jesus, but also the capacity of Jesus. He senses trouble. He senses feelings that, that, that he needs to step into. You know, our dog Cotton, stuff you can't make up, he has an uncanny ability to tell what people are feeling, especially if they need a little extra love. And Cotton one time just pulled us over to a lady in a park, would not go where we told him to go, and went over there and she started petting him and loving on him, and then shared with us that her husband had just died the day before. 
He, he says, this lady's trouble. I got, I got to get over there. I, I don't know how that, that sounds kooky. I don't know how that works. True story, he, he actually got out of the fence one time. Uh, not long after we moved to St. Pete, we got a call. We found him on the back street behind us at a wake at a house. He said, I don't know what, what you make of that. But I do know that the people said, man, it really was good to have him around here and to kind of come love on us in a dark moment. Well, Jesus did that. Let not your heart be troubled. Then he says, you trust in God. You can trust in me. Now, there are some people in this world when they look in the face and say, you can trust me. That that's a pretty good hint. Maybe you ought to be careful. But when Jesus looks at you and says, trust me on this. That is dependable. It is reliable. It is faithful. It is true. He says, trust in me. Put your belief, put your trust fully in me. And then we know the, the rest of the story. The verses that jump out at us are the ones that says, I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there, there you will be also. He tells us in our father's house are many mansions, is the old King James. It's actually better it, uh, translated rooms. Uh, and then he gives us the passage about, I am the way, the truth, and the life. We know those. But there is a line in this passage that's almost a throwaway line. It's one that if we, we don't pay attention, we will miss it. And it is this. If it were not so, I would have told you. And, and the, the converse of that is, if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you. You can trust me. It's, it's an amazing word that we began to understand as children, and we carry it with us through all the days of our life, and that word is promise. That word is a given your word. I'm going to do something, and you can count on it. You, you can take it to the bank. Now, that's, that's a great word. When I think of that, I think of a lot of things. I, uh, I think of the old Cajun, Justin Wilson, who used to say, guarantee. That's a, that's a Cajun uh, derivative of a, a French uh, phrase, which simply means uh, you, can, you can bet on it. I'm telling you the truth. I also like it when he said things like, I'm going to be done told you. And essentially, that's what Jesus is saying here. I, I, what I'm about to tell you is something that you can hang your hat on. You can do better than that. You can bet your life on. You can trust me. I remember when I was a kid, my dad would tell me things sometimes. And every now and then, I'd wonder if he was telling me the truth or if what he was asking me to do was implausible. My dad had an odd saying. He would say, son... If I tell you a grasshopper can pull a plow, hook him up. Now, I laugh about that. My father didn't grow up on a farm. He grew up in a, a mill village area. Uh, he never plowed behind anything in his life, but that phrase stuck with him, and it stuck with me. I knew that when he said that, he meant it. Do what I tell you. Believe in what I'm saying, not just because I'm saying it, but because it's true. You can bank on it. And that is what Jesus is doing here. Earlier, I asked you to uh, take out a couple of cards, a piece of paper, an envelope, and write something on it. And what I ask you to write, and if you're, you're checking it a little later, you can still do that. It's just the words, because I said I would. Because I said I would. Now, let me tell you a story. Story of a young man named Alex Sheen. You'll see a picture of him here in just a second. Alex, just a regular guy. Uh, graduated college as a, as a young man and was working at a, uh, a company, used his computer skills, and his father passed away. And he wanted some way to honor his father. And he thought about it. My father, he said, wasn't a great war hero. He wasn't wealthy. He never wrote a book. He never did any of those things. But he always kept his promises. 
So he had this idea that he could write on a card, and he would produce these, and at the bottom say, because I said I would, and make a promise to somebody. And as the idea evolved, he said, well, I'm going to send it out free to whoever asks. And uh, it started out with five, and five became 50, and 50 became 500. And last time I checked, he had sent out over 11 million cards free of charge in over 150 countries with simply the phrase at the bottom, because I said I would. Now, here was his idea, that he would honor his father by encouraging and inspiring people to make and keep commitments, particularly commitments that would change lives, uh, commitments that would uh, be very specific to, I'm going to write this, I'm going to uh, give my life to do something, I'm going to, you can fill in your blank. And the idea is that you would take that card, you would write on there what you promise, because I said I would, and sign the bottom of the card. And then give it to a friend. The idea is once you have fulfilled that, that you would go back to the friend and the friend would give you the card back. And in giving the card back, it would be the representation that you had kept your promise, that you were a person of your word, that you could be trusted. So I want you to do something for me this morning. Is take the first of those cards that I ask you to, uh, to create and write on there a promise that you would make to somebody. Just think about it. It could be a little something. Maybe something big. I promise to, and then fill in your blank. I will tell you, I've got some cards to deliver this weekend. I hope you do too. And then sign your name at the bottom. And think about who you would give that to as you fulfilled that promise and show that you could be trusted to carry that out. But then I want you to take the second one and write on there again, because I said I would, leave room for a signature, and then in that place of your signature, write the name Jesus. And then I want you to think of something that Jesus has promised that applies to you. I want you to think about that. And there's so many promises of God. Somebody's counted them up. There's like 7,000 different promises throughout the scripture. Many of those, if not most, are, as you've heard me say, principles that precede the promise. So if you live the principle, you put yourself in a position to realize the promise. But many of those promises are not conditional on anything except God's word and Jesus' faithfulness. In fact, I went through this week and I looked through every verse in the New Testament where Jesus used the words, I will, where he specifically said, I'm going to do this. I'm telling you this. I'm going to do it. And so I want you to hear a few of those. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. I will give you rest. I'll give you words of wisdom. He said, I will rise again. And then he said, I will come again and take you with me. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. I will give my life for the world. Jesus says, I will draw all people to me. He said to his followers, I will not leave you as orphans. You're never going to be alone. He says, I will reward what is done in secret when he talks about irrational 
generosity that does not seek uh, attention. He said, if you acknowledge me, I will acknowledge you to the Father. I will send a comforter. And he unpacks for us the first time the understanding of the Holy Spirit. And in those famous words from uh, Matthew's gospel that we know is, is the Great Commission, where he concludes with, I will be with you always, even to the end of the earth. Now, there's a lot of other things that, that we find in the Bible that are promised to us. But what I'd like you to do is take a minute and think of something that Jesus has said he would do that applies to you. If you want to broaden that out beyond just the gospel to any of the words that we know in Scripture, uh, look up promises of God on the internet. You'll find plenty to pick from. And then find your way back to that card and write on that card at the very top, I will... And then write the promise of Jesus that you're claiming this morning. I will not. I'm writing mine right now. And then sign it. Jesus. Then hold on to it. And imagine for just a moment that Jesus himself has given you a because I said I would card that you can hold on to, that you can trust. Because, you know, sometimes you just need to be able to do that. Sometimes we feel isolated and alone. We need to know that he's always with us and that he will not leave us comfortless. Sometimes we, we wonder if, if this world, it's just, it's just too much to bear. But he gives us the promise of a world to come. Life in this world and that beyond us. Sometimes life comes at you hard. And... It's just more than we can bear. And we need to claim that promise that all that we've needed, he will provide for us. And he'll do so out of an abundance of love and an abundance of his capacity. See, promise is a big word. And promises either make something or break something. Promises made and kept can be the most powerful things you can imagine. Promises made and broken can destroy lives and souls and spirits and families and so much more. But a promise that comes to us through the person of Jesus who says, I can be trusted. Guarantee. Going to be done told you. If I tell you a grasshopper can pull a plow, hook him up. That you hang on to. And, and we, we find those that he, he left us his will, so to speak, because all of these things I said earlier are things that he said he will do. He gave us his assurances that nothing is impossible with God. He told us how to live when he said, give, and it will be given unto you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened. And no one can pluck you out of my hands. There's nowhere that you can run to that is beyond the grace of God in Jesus Christ. That's good words for most days, most any day. But I'm particularly thinking about the days that we're living in. Because folks, let's, let's just be honest with each other for a bit. 2020 has not been the year of clear vision that we've wanted it to be. 
I don't know about you, but I started thinking about the year 2020 many years ago. What would it be like when we got there? I don't know that we could have ever uh, imagined being paralyzed by a pandemic, that we could see the uneasiness, the discord, and lack of civil discourse in the world we live in. I don't know that people who have built businesses and have tried so hard to, to make their way and, and got a foothold and this thing hit and it just comes undone. And sometimes by luck of the draw as to what career you chose, you, you're doing well in these days or you're holding your own or things have really fallen off. We've all been edgy, tired. I've spent time this week with three of my pastor friends and probably could have had many more just talking about the, the, the load that all this is, is born. Someone said the other day that we are officially now in October. That means that we're in the fourth quarter of 2020. And if you're a football fan, that only means that you better hope you're playing the Falcons because you can always come back in the fourth quarter on them. Well, in the fourth quarter of this year, they just kicked our tails. I want you to hear the words of a loving Lord that says, let not your heart be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. I'm going to take care of you, he says, in this world and in the world to come. And if it wasn't so, I wouldn't have told you that. But he says, I did tell you that. And because I did, you can bank on it. You can believe it. All we need to do is remember what we already know. And then let that fill our hearts and fill our lives in a way that nothing else can. So imagine this. You know, I, I told you that the idea behind the because I said I would cards is that you make the promise and you give it to somebody. And when that promise is kept and fulfilled, that you, 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 you get it back as a reminder that you're a person of your word, that you did what you set out to do, you followed through. I want you to close your eyes and picture something. I want you to picture taking that card that you're holding with the promise from Jesus. I will. Whatever you wrote down there. And at the bottom it says, because I said I would love Jesus. And imagine that on your grave getting up morning one day that you're walking up to the gates of that place that he has prepared for us. And you've got that card in your hand. And you walk up to him. And you say, Jesus, you kept your word. You proved that you could be trusted. And because of that, my life was better down there. And I have a place up here. Here's your card back. And I imagine Jesus would wink and smile and put a hug on us and said, I'm glad you figured that out because I can be trusted. That's our word this morning. Know how sweet that is to trust in Jesus and remembering what we already know. Father, walk with us from this place, wherever we are. Allow us to know the strength of your promise and your word and your capacity and your love. And then help us, Lord, to be promise keepers too. That when we say to Jesus, you can be trusted, 
that he could say back to us, and you can be too. That is my hope, my prayer, and my expectation. And I make it in the strong, strong name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you all for joining us this Sunday. Now please join Mr. Michael Boggs singing How Great Thou Art. Then I shall die.